Hello and welcome back all of you wonderful Focus Otters. My name is Mike Leando. Today, we're gonna go ahead and upload some resumes. What I mean by that is, let's flip over to the screen, and we're gonna enter this site here. Now the whole idea is that you have candidates or maybe you're just trying to gather feedback and you need files to be uploaded. Well, what we can do in that case is have a simple uploader where if I click on this button, we can have that person enter in their first name, email, choose a file, and then send that on over. Now, here's the thing. In this scenario, you probably don't want everyone in the world to have the ability to put stuff in your storage bucket, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So what we're gonna do is have them sign up prior to being able to view this page. So you can imagine this as a segment of a larger website. Now, in doing so, we're gonna cover a bunch of things. In fact, if you want to read along and see everything that we're building step by step, I actually have a blog post showing just that. So that way you kind of get the best of both worlds video or written post. So to kick things off, we're going to allow our users to sign up. Then we will call an API. That way they have the ability to upload and modify their PDF uploads. Now, the cool thing is that once they send that data over to our database, DynamoDB, this is what is going to take that information in this Lambda function that you see right here and email the recruiter or the party of interest. Uh, meaning it has to grab that, I, that image from our S3 bucket. And we're gonna be doing all of this, of course, with an AWS Amplify. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead, pass things along and go and get started. Okay, now as I mentioned, this scenario is already put into a blog post. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and check the description because all of the files and necessary information is going to be uploaded to GitHub. So click on this link, uh, email, amplify email recipes, and just make sure that you're on the resume uploader. Okay, so on to the code. We're gonna move somewhat quickly because a lot of this is similar to my contact form video that you may have seen before. So as you may have seen by now, we're going to throw in some code. That way we can get Amplify uh, components set up and we can also get Amplify initialized. So the first one is gonna give us that pre-built sign-in mechanism. And then from there, uh, we'll just kind of get the standard Amplify set up. So I'll catch you once this is all done and built. All right, it looks like our setup just got done finishing up. So let's go ahead and continue along by adding the first part of our equation, which is authentication. Simple enough, Amplify add auth is one of the easiest things to add in within an Amplify project. Now here's what we have to realize. Our candidates are already given us their email. So for us to go ahead and capture their username, which is probably something we want, I'm going to select username authentication here, but of course you can let that differ uh, based off of the project that you have. After our authentication is taking place, let's add in our API. Now we can easily do this with a REST API, but of course, I kind of like to do things with GraphQL these days using AppSync. So I'm gonna select GraphQL here. Now by default, it will give us the option to select things with an API key, but we just set up Cognito. So we can go ahead and set this to be Cognito instead. We don't need any additional auth types. So I'm gonna say no here. Everything else looks pretty good to me. So let's continue. And then we'll just have the default single object, but we'll be modifying that shortly. And then I'm just going to paste in the schema that we have for our project here. It's pretty straightforward. Now this is going to mimic the idea of having a candidate, so that signed in user, show up to our application and they can have an initial entry for a resume upload, or they can take that resume and update it. Meaning they, if there's already one existing with the same name, they can overwrite it. So if I upload resume.pdf, I can come back later and add the same thing. Great, so we got that taken care of. Before we get too far into the code, let's just kind of keep going along with our architecture diagram and we'll add in some storage. So let's clear this out and then I'll do amplify add storage. Now note that we have in Amplify two different types of storage mechanisms. We have a database, but then we also have an S3 bucket. That's clearly what we're gonna be setting uh, ourselves up for here. So we can go ahead and say content for the first selection, and then we'll accept the defaults uh, for the other ones. 
Feel free to name these whatever you want. Uh, but auth users are the only folks that should be uh, having the ability to access this S3 bucket. Now, once you're authenticated, of course, uh, create, update, read, and delete all makes sense here. Now, one cool thing that I love is that when a file gets uploaded, we do have the option to trigger a Lambda function to do some manipulation. Uh, we're not going to cover that, but if you are interested in that, let me know, drop me a comment, and we can explore that in a later video. So I'm going to select no here. Clear that out and run an amplify status is going to give us an indication of where we are currently. So we have these items here. We have authentication in place, our API. Uh, now note the API is automatically going to add in our database. And then we also have storage with S3. Let's add in a Lambda function. That way when a candidate uploads something to our database, we can set up a trigger that will automatically get fired to send us an email of their resume. Pretty cool. Now we'll make this fairly basic. We're going to have a Lambda function, of course. I'm just going to call this one resume func. Node.js is our go-to. Now it is a Lambda trigger. And it's like, cool, what is this being triggered off of? DynamoDB is what we're using in this example. And if you note, we have the option to set up a table on our own. But we have one configured with this app model directive already for us. So let's select this one here. It knows that there's already one, or, or rather there's only one database in our project. So it selects it automatically. Pretty cool. Now with these advanced settings, this is going to be different than normal because we are going to hop into some of these options here. So let's say that we do want to access other resources, meaning this function needs the ability to hop into that S3 bucket so let's say yes, for accessing other resources, it's going to be storage. And there is our S3 bucket right there. Now, what does this function need the ability to do? As I just mentioned, it has to read from this bucket. So uh, do we want to invoke it on a recurring schedule? No, but note that because we did select, we want access to the bucket, it's automatically going to add this environment variable for us. Super cool stuff, uh, but no on the recurring schedule, no on Lambda layers. But do you want to configure environment variables for this function? I'm going to say yes here. For the name, let's say that it's going to be our SES email. I need the ability to say that this email that we just received is from someone. And it's obviously not going to be from the candidate. It's going to be from SES. So we'll have this environment variable here. The thing to note is, as we'll see shortly, we're going to hop into the console just to make sure that this is uh, a verified email address because a lot of you will likely still be in the sandbox. But I'm going to say mtliando at focusotter.com. And the thing about being in the sandbox is you can only send and receive emails from verified email addresses uh, until you're ready to move into production. So I'm done from here. Do I want to configure secrets? I'm good there. But no, now we have these two additional environment variables. Uh, which is just a really nice DX feature that we offer. So do we want to edit the local Lambda function now? Let's say yes and hop into this file. And this is where things kind of differ from the blog post in the sense that they get easier. We've had some nice updates, so I'm going to paste in the code here and then we'll sort of talk about what's going on. It's not too much, 50 lines of code or so. We'll give that a quick save and take a look at what we have here. As mentioned, there are our environment variables. We have the AWS SDK. And technically, you can send attachments with just SES. That's perfectly fine. I just find it a little bit easier to import the node mailer package. So before I forget, let's go ahead and import that real quick. Uh, the way I like to do it is to say this is my function. So I'm going to CD and then drag this folder over here. Hit enter. And then we are automatically into it. So I can say npmi node mailer. And then we're all good. I think it's five levels to get back up. There we are. And now I'm all set here. So talking about this code for just a moment here, uh, this is just going to make it easier for us to send that email with an attachment. We still have to bring in S3 and SES, of course. And this is sort of that binding that NodeMailer provides to us. But essentially, if you've seen my previous blog posts, you know that when DynamoDB gets triggered, it will batch any updates that have come through. So we have to iterate over this potential stream of batches 
and we're specifically listening for insert events. So how this sounds in plain English is that when an item gets added to our database, let's go ahead and grab the file name, the email, the candidate's name, and then this candidate identity, which is sort of a unique identifier, not anything sensitive, but just a way to reference the specific person that um, made this request. We have that, all that information. We're going to grab our environment variable from our bucket. And we're essentially saying, let's just make a get call to get the resume file from S3. And then we compose our email, pretty straightforward. So technically, I'm sending it you know, from myself to myself. Feel free to tweak that however you see fit. Great, and then at the very end, we're just, after composing it, sending the email. That's essentially all we have inside of this file. Now we're just about ready to test things out. Uh, and as mentioned, I have that email for me already verified, my focus order email. But if you don't, let's head into AWS SES on this console. So if you're here on this screen, you would go to create identity. Uh, it's an email address that we're going to select and you would just enter in the email address here. And then from there, you would go to create the identity. That email address would get an email to verify and then you can follow the steps there. Now, one thing that I do want to do while I'm in this SES console is if you're on this screen, we're going to go to our verified identities. Click on this one here. And I'm looking for the ARN for SES. And by grabbing the ARN, what I'm saying is I want this function to call SES and have the ability to send emails using it to, in this case, this email address. Now in the real world, this will be whoever is supposed to be receiving those emails. So I'm gonna copy this. And what I'll do is over in my custom policies file for my Lambda function, I'm gonna say the resource that it has the ability to access is this one. And if you didn't want to hard code the email inside of here, in case it was a public repo or something, feel free to put it in a star and then that works just as well. But for the sake of ease, let's have that in there. And then the method that we're using is this SES send raw email. Great. So that way this function has the ability to call that method. And just like that, we're actually all done with our backend. So let's go ahead and push up our resources with amplify push. I'm going to throw in a dash Y flag there. Uh, so we're still going to get the table to show us what we created, but it'll automatically accept uh, that these are the things that we want to upload. While this is doing its thing, let's work on the front end. We can get that taken care of pretty easily by first heading over to app.js. And what we'll do is pop in this first part where we can bring in Amplify. And then over in index.js, we're just gonna go ahead and refactor this. So that way it says this function is sort of living on its own. And what we'll bring in is the with authenticator component, which is just an easy, easy way of adding authentication within our app. And if we flip back, I believe that's enough to get sign up working. So if I were to give this a refresh, you'll see here that it has the components in the fields here, but it's super ugly. Um, and that's a clear sign that I just forgot to import some CSS, which if you forget to do that, this is what we pretty much need right here. So once you have your CSS imported, as well as the Amplify provider, go ahead and flip back over to the web page, And then you can see that, yep, we have our sign-in page and the ability to create an account. So we're just about done. The last step that we have is that over in our resume form file, we're essentially going to make sure that this is configured to send protected uploads over to uh, Amazon S3. So what I can do is bring in a couple imports as well as uh, a way to configure that storage bucket right here at the bottom. So I'll say import API storage and auth. Uh, and then note that we also have the ability to create a candidate. This is going to take place whenever a user uploads. Now, one thing to note about these configuration levels, as you see here, I have level equals protected. What this essentially means is that the person who uploaded it is the only one who can modify it, but that does still give access to others to read from this uh, particular file within S3. If you wanna know more about that, let me go ahead and switch over to a page within our documentation. So that way you can see uh, we have different file access levels, whether it be public, protected, or private, and then you can read up on the differences there. 
Typically, you're going to use public, but in this case, it does make sense to have protected access. So to tie this all together, what we can do is head over to our handle submit function, which happens anytime a user clicks on enter here. And I have this handy dandy to do that says enter backend code here. I'm simply going to take this, replace it with this code right here. And to kind of step through this, what we're doing is saying, grab that um, credentials, the Cognito identity ID of the user, and sort of hold on to that for just a moment because we are going to first upload this file to S3. And we have the call to AppSync, essentially taking in the user's email name. And when it comes to the resume file, we just pull that off of the key that we grab whenever the user uploads something to S3, or I'm sorry, from the browser. And then on the user identity, we're grabbing those current credentials. And then there's a dot identity ID property that we can then use, which is unique to the user. Now, if this was a fully public site with unauthenticated access, this would be unique to the device, whether it be an iPhone, Android phone, or computer. Over in the browser, I'm going to first create an account. Uh, we'll just set this over to be Focus Otter. Perfect, I just got the code. Let's go ahead and enter that in and confirm that. So now we're back to our site. So we can essentially upload a resume here. I'm going to say that the name is going to be Michael. So we'll give it the Focus Otter email here and choose a PDF. Perfect, I went ahead and uploaded my resume to this file. So let's click send and then the moment of truth. So this is going to create an item over in DynamoDB, fire off our Lambda function, grabs the item from S3, and then emails it to us, the reviewer in this case. Quick little troubleshooting step here. I didn't get the email. So what I did is I hopped into the Lambda function, went into CloudWatch to see if any errors were thrown. Sure enough, I get this uh, sort of missing required key bucket in params. This is coming from our Lambda function. So by hopping over here, I can see that when we ended up calling our bucket name, where is that? Right here, this process.env. Uh, this is actually boilerplate code. This environment variable does not exist. And the reason it doesn't is because we switched it with uh, this one right up here. So quick little naming change. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out and then try it again after I deploy with Amplify Push. Once I made that quick fix, I did in fact get the email. Uh, you can see that I have it from myself, but this is the candidate's email address right over here. You could reach Michael at the following email, and then it has my actual AWS cloud resume uh, located right here as well. So super cool stuff. Sorry about the small little mix up there. All right, and there you go. We were able to go ahead and get the email successfully sent from a candidate on over to us. So that way we can continue on with the interview process or do whatever it is that you were wanting to facilitate. If you like this, definitely go ahead and consider subscribing. We're reaching that 1,000 YouTube subscriber mark. So for all of you that have been keeping the channel growing and supporting and sharing the videos, I definitely appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing all the comments regarding what you would like me to create next. But with that said, my name is Michael Leondo. Peace out, Focus Otters, and I'll catch you all next time. Later.